What's up guys? This is the brand new wireless microphone kit by Smallrig. It's referred to as the Forovella W60. I'm pretty excited to try this out because this is probably the first premium wireless microphone kit that Smallrig have created. If you guys are not familiar with Smallrig, they're one of the leading providers for filming, camera, equipment, accessories, and I've had a lot of their products in the past. I've had rigs from them for my DSLR cameras, and they have very good premium products. For them to release such a premium wireless microphone kit like this, which I'm going to showcase to you guys in a second, I think might be a very good game changer for them. So let's go ahead and unbox this, check out all of the different specifications, and more importantly, let's see how these actually sound because they are packed with some really good features. Let's get into it. Okay, so you can see there's some information on the side of the box about everything that comes inside the box, but I'll give you guys an unboxing anyway. Some of the key highlights, it is dual channel wireless technology. You can switch between mono and stereo very easily. There's three LCD screens, both on the two transmitters and one receiver. It has a low cut function in there as well, so you can drown out a lot of the background ambient noises. And they have long battery lives as well, so you can have continuous power from the transmitters for around eight hours as well. Let's go ahead and open this. And already I can see that this is going to look like a very nice piece of kit. So let's take this out. This is the charging case. It's got the small rig logo on top. It's not even too heavy. And in fact, this is quite nice as well. It has an inbuilt USB cable, which I think is so convenient because with all of the other microphones that I reviewed, you have the USB cable separately and you have to look after them, you lose them, you're finding alternatives. This one, you can just charge this up anywhere you go with the cable integrator. So I think that's a very nice touch. Let's take a look at the microphones. These look very nice, very compact, and these will be competing with the big players in the game. And let's take a look at the transmitter. This is actually very lightweight. You've got your digital display there. USB charging port there, microphone input there for the lav cable. Then on the right hand side, you've got the power cable, the pairing and the low cut filter switch there. You've got a belt clip as well, doubles up as a cold shoe mount. And then let's look at the receiver. This is really great because it partitions the audio separately from both different channels, so the left and the right. When you have both transmitters in use, you can adjust the gain and the volume levels for both of them independently. A lot of the wireless microphone kits I've tried in the past, the gain is actually controlled for both of the transmitters together. So if you're changing it for one, you change it for all. Having the ability to do that independently because maybe one person is speaking a little bit louder than the other person, that is very key as well, especially for production and filming teams. This will go a very long way. But on the right hand side, you have yourself the power cable. On the left, you have yourself the USB charging, the output for the TRS cable, and then you have the headphone monitoring port as well, which is very important if you do have people behind the camera. It's important to see if they can actually hear you clearly and if the audio is transmitting correctly. Everything charges up in the case as well once you put it back in. Let's dive into the other accessories. So in the smaller one, you have both of the wind muffs. And then you have this. These are metal stickers. So if you wanted to stick this anywhere with the small rig logo, then you can do that as just kind of a, a nicer touch. So here you have a red cable and a black cable. The red cable is the TRS to TRS one, which is for your DSLR mirrorless cameras. The black one, you've got a label on there already, which says for phone. So this is the TRRS to TRS. In the next one, you have a USB to USB-C charging cable as well, in case you wanted to set this up and charge it with a USB-C input. And finally, a couple more things in the box. You have yourself the user manual, just to learn about all of the information that is displayed on the digital displays and how to use the buttons, the ports, switching between the modes, etc. And then the last thing here, you have a small rig carry pouch for all of your microphone kit. This is where you can place the charging case inside and take it with you, making it quite portable. So that's everything in the box. And one thing I did notice, it doesn't come with the wired lavalier microphones. So one thing I've noticed is that this doesn't come with any wireless lavalier microphones as well. So you'd have to purchase those separately. 
I'll even put a link in the description for some options from Amazon as well for you guys if you wanted to add that and see how they sound. But today I'm going to be using the internal microphones built directly into the small rig wireless mic in the transmitter. So let's go ahead and set this up with my Sony a7C and let's see how it currently sounds. Okay, let me go ahead and power these on because when you take it out of the charging case, they don't automatically power on. So you'd have to manually turn them on, just hold down the power button for a few seconds. I will do that for each of the transmitters and the receiver. And I'll quickly run through some of the options on the screens displayed. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, let's start off with the transmitters. So looking at these screens, on the top left, you have yourself the microphone, it tells you if it's muted or unmuted. Right now it's unmuted. If you hit the power button just on the side there once, have a note of the top left. It's now muted, unmuted, muted, unmuted. So it's very simple and easy to do so. Then we have the low cut filter switch there. If you press this, you can currently see the low cut filter icon is on. So the low cut filter option on this transmitter is on press it, it disappears, it's now off. So that's a very quick and easy way and it's very convenient to have it visualized on the screen just in case you may accidentally press it and you can't remember if it's on or off. This is very important to know if that is there so it doesn't affect your audio in any way. And it's the same with both transmitters. Now let's take a look at the actual receiver. So you have two dials here. Right now you can see it's set to mono audio. If I press the power button once, this now switches over to stereo audio like you see on the top left. If it's on stereo, you can independently change the gain levels with these knobs for both the transmitters separately. So right now, A is on zero, B is on six. The max it goes to is volume gain level 10 and I can control that separately. If I was to switch back to mono, if I use one of the knobs, both audio levels will change at the same time and you can't control them independently. If you do lose pairing with the transmitters, then you can pair them by pressing down the pair button on the transmitters and press the knobs themselves both together, A and B, and that will connect the transmitters back to the receiver. So I really like the design, it's minimal, it's detailed, and I'm ready to test the audio out to see how this sounds. So let's go ahead and see how this performs in both mono audio and stereo audio. I'll test in all different gain levels. I'll also test with the low cut filter switch on, and I'll do a final test of recording outdoors to see how it performs in more windy background environments. Okay guys, this is volume 10 on mono audio using just one transmitter. It is probably loud, but it is quite clear, and I've done a bunch of these tests already. I have played it back. I'm quite impressed with the audio. It's super clear, and I don't hear any static or any high frequencies or anything like that. So what I want to do is give you a test of speaking whilst the volume is going down from 10 to zero and it goes down in increments of two. So let's go ahead and I'll put it down to eight and I'll keep this microphone at the same distance to, from my mouth. Okay, so this is now volume level eight. So I've reduced it down a little bit. It's probably still just as clear as it was with 10. Now this is on volume six. Again, you're going to start hearing the drops in the audio levels. Let's keep it going and I'm now going to push it over to number four and see how that sounds. Okay, so this is now volume level four and it's probably getting a lot quieter. No need to adjust your volume levels of how you're watching this video. I do recommend that you do use headphones to listen to these audio tests just to get the best idea. Let's continue, two more level drops and see how they sound. Now we're on level two, almost at the end and it's going to be very quiet compared to when it first started on volume 10. I'm still maintaining the same distance of the microphone from my mouth. Going to finish off now, volume zero. Zero, I don't want anyone to be confused as being muted because it still allows audio to come through, but it's going to be very quiet. So let's do that now. So here is level zero, and you guys can definitely hear the difference between 10 up until now, it has dropped. It's probably very quiet, whereby you guys are probably looking to put your volume up. But I think for me, the ideal level is probably around six. And of course, that's all dependent on your location, your environment, whether you're indoors or outdoors, and lots of different scenarios. But if you are in a noisy environment, I want to test the low cut filter. So 
Let me put the volume back up to six and give you a test of that. Okay guys, I've actually put it back to level eight. I think if I'm going to clip it on my shirt, it does reduce the volume a little bit compared to when I'm just holding it directly in front of my mouth. If I look downwards, it will be a lot clearer, but because I'll be facing upwards, you can see the difference in the audio level. So I've still left it on mono audio, but now I'm going to test the low cut filter. So I've got this tower fan right behind me and I'm gonna turn this on and you guys will be able to very clearly hear this in my video. But once I switch on the low cut filter, I want you guys to judge how much of the background ambient noises this actually reduces. So I'll turn my fan on and I'll put it on to level one and showcase to you guys how much this interferes with the microphone on the small rig. So can you guys hear it? I do recommend, try to put some headphones in for this test specifically. It is for me going to be heard a lot louder than you guys may be listening to it in this video. But now let's see if I can just isolate that completely and turn on the low cut filter. So I have the low cut filter icon there. Hopefully you guys can see that. Can you guys still hear that fan? It has done a good job reducing a lot of that background ambience. I think if it's a lot louder, you'd still be able to hear it. Now if I'm gonna turn that fan up to its max level. Of course, that will still get picked up because it is quite a powerful fan. And I think this works best if it has up to 200 Hertz of noise or lower. That's what's best used with low cut filters. And the max level on this might be slightly higher than that. But just to give you guys an idea, maybe that's something you might have in your environment in case you wanted to film there. So that's the max level. I'm pretty confident you guys can still hear this and it's picking up because the wind is obviously blowing towards this direction and the wind will probably go into the microphone itself, which nothing is going to really stop that. But this is purely just to give you an idea if you are in a very noisy environment or if you're outdoors when it's very windy, then this is what would happen. So just turning that off, low cut filter still on. It's super clear, I can't hear anything else in the background of my videos when I don't have a fan on or anything like that and I have the switch on. I think it's perfect for filming for most scenarios and for most filmmakers and production crew. This is a excellent choice, especially for someone that will be behind the camera and would like to monitor audios for people doing interviews or speaking or acting, whatever it may be. The next test I want to do is now turn on the stereo mode by pressing the power button on the receiver turning on the second transmitter because it is dual channels and you're going to need this for stereo and let's see how they sound. Okay guys, so now I have stereo mode on and I've got both transmitters turned on and connected to the receiver. This is dual channel, so it will be independently controlling the audio and recording that depending on the left and right channel inputs. So this is A and this is B. So if you are listening to this with some headphones or you've got the volume quite loud on your laptop, you'll be able to notice the audio coming from one side of your laptop or your headphones to the other side. So left and right channels, this is recording independently, but when you do have them together, obviously you're going to get more of like a surround sound type cinematic audio experience. And this is you know really great for high-end production teams that are recording audio for multiple different filming purposes that require inputs into both right and left separately. So for me personally, I would generally record with just mono audio because I am recording myself. But if you do accidentally or even purposefully record in stereo mode with just one transmitter, then you can in post edit convert that to dual mono audio and have that outputted into both channels. So right now, although the audio is coming out in one side of your channels, however you're listening this to, this is a great option to have for those people that really like to record in studio. My final test, I'm now going to head outside and see how this performs in windy weather. And one other key highlight and specification of these microphones is if you do record outdoors, then this can have a max range of up to 100 meters barrier free. So you need to have a straight line of sight. I think that's a very good distance. I've tested microphones that have pushed that up until like 200 meters. So although it's not the furthest, I think for most scenarios, no one is ever going to go more than 100 meters away from the camera anyway. But if that's something you wanted to do, then this will give you very good audio nonetheless in that case. So let's go ahead and try out and see how it sounds outdoors. Okay, so I'm standing about seven meters away from my camera right now. 
it's not too windy today but there is some wind that's moving around and i just wanted to see if you guys can hear that being picked up by the microphone at all i feel like it's done a really good job with the tests that i've done from the day before just to let you guys know i'm recording on mono audio and it is at level eight which i think is probably going to be my most common setting for recording with this microphone all right guys so hopefully you found those audio reviews useful i'm really impressed with the premium quality of the small rig microphone of course i didn't get the opportunity to test this with any wired lavalier microphones because it doesn't come with any in the box you can get them from anywhere online even from the small rig website they provide and offer wired lavalier microphones for you guys and ultimately for me i can see myself using this for many different purposes i really like the fact that it has a display on the screen just so I can always see what level audio is on the receiver, if I have the low cut filter on, if I wanted to mute for any reason, so many different options. It just sounds so great. And if you guys did like the audio quality in this brand new set of microphones, then make sure to like this video. Of course, as always, if you guys do have any questions about the small rig microphones, then do drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys. I think, you know, the convenience of just having this as plug and play. And in fact, not only can you just use the belt clip to mount this, this has a magnetic back. There you go. If you wanted to mount this on maybe a camera accessory or any other rig for your filming and you don't want to use up the space with the cold shoe mount, maybe because something else is utilizing it, then using the magnet is also a great option. This is just released. Check out the latest pricing information and all of the detailed specifications by hitting the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe. I have reviews out every week covering things from camera accessories, tech, microphones, and I'll include all of this and all of my other wireless microphone reviews in a playlist down below in case you guys wanted to check those ones out. Super happy with this and hopefully I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.